what's up everyone welcome back to another episode of aws tutorial and today i'll show you how to access the dynamodb table in a different account using a zoom row i'm just using dynamodb as an example in this tutorial but the idea can apply to other services as well such as s3 and kinesis so without further ado let's get to it all right so right now i'll log into two different aws accounts i have account number one here and then i have account number two so what we're going to do in this tutorial is that we're going to first, in account number two, we're going to create a DynamoDB table that we can operate on. And then we're going to create an IAM row that allows account number one to assume. And then we're going to move on to account number one to create an IAM row to assume this row. And then finally, we're going to create a Lambda function that uses this IAM row. And then we're going to write a code to access the DynamoDB table. And now let's go back to the AWS console. We have account number two. So I'm going to type in DynamoDB. Create table. I'm just going to call it test table. And then I'm going to use account ID as the primary key, a string, and then leave everything as default, create. All right, so it's done. And now we're going to create an IAM row for account number one to assume. So IAM. Rows. Create row. And we're going to choose the second option, another AWS account. And then we're going to go to account number one. Copy the account ID. We're going to paste it here. And then next permission, and we're going to add the DynamoDB4 permission so that when account number one assumes this row, it has access to our DynamoDB table. So hit next, next, row name, DynamoDB4 access row. Hit create. All right, so it's done. And now let's go to account number one and create an IAM row to assume this. So I'm in account number one. I'll type in IAM. All right, so before we can create an IAM row, we need to create a custom policy that defines how we're going to assume the row that we just created in account number two. So I'm going to hit policies, create, and then JSON. And here inside statement, we're going to add a JSON object. It's going to have effect allow and then action inside action we're going to say sts and then we're going to say assume row and resources and this is going to be the on for the IAM row that we just created in account number two so we're going to go back to number two and then this is the row that we just created so i'm going to go ahead and click on it and then copy this go back to account number one paste it here. So what this statement means is that it allows the IAM row in account number one to assume this IAM row, which is in account number two. So this is done. We're going to hit next. Next. Give it a name. I will just call it DynamoDB test assume policy. Good enough. Create. And now we can create an IAM row to use this policy. So I'm going to hit rows, create row. We're going to select Lambda because the Lambda function is going to use it. Permission. And then we're going to attach the policy that we just created. I believe it's that one. Hit next. Next. I'll just call it DynamoDB full access row. AWS one, create row. All right, so it's done. And now let's move on to create a Lambda function. Create from scratch, give it a name. I just call it DynamoDB test Lambda. We're going to use Python. And permission, we're going to attach the row that we just created. And 
then we're going to create a function. All right, so before we get to the Lambda code, let's go back to account number two and insert an item to the DynamoDB so we can read from it. So go back to account number two, DynamoDB, create item. And then first name, Felix, something to be something. All right, he's safe. So now we have one item. And now we're going to try to read that from account number one. So go back to account number one, lambda, click on the lambda function. We're going to delete everything here. So first thing first, we're going to import photo three. And then we're going to define a STS client from Bodo3 client STS. And then inside the Lambda function, we're going to do STS response, which is STS client dot assume row. And then I believe it takes in the arn. And that is the row that we created in account number two. So we're going to go back to account number two, copy this on, paste it here. And then the second attribute is the row session name. I believe we can just call it whatever. And then next is the duration in seconds where the STS token is valid. I'll just give it five minutes. I think that's the minimum. And then now we can define a DynamoDB client for account number two. So let's call it AWS2, DynamoDB client equals Porto3 client DynamoDB region US East one because that's the region where we define our DynamoDB table in account number two. And then next, it takes in the access key ID and we're gonna get that from the STS response. So like that, credentials, access key ID. The next is gonna take in the secret access key. And same thing, we're gonna take that from the STS response. And then finally, it's gonna take in the token. Okay, that is it for the client. And now we can use it to get the item that we just defined. So let's say response, AWS2, Dynamo client. Let's just do a get item. Table name, I believe we call it. Let's go back to account number two. We call it test table. Go back to account number one. And then the key, I think we use account ID as the primary key. And it's a string. And I believe, I'm just gonna copy this. Go back, paste it here. And now let's just return the response. Okay, let's test it out. So hit save or deploy and then test. Test. And there you go. It's able to get the item from the table in account number two. And that's exactly what the attributes are. We have first name Felix and then something to be something. So it seems like it's working. And now you may wanna ask, what if I wanna use the Lambda function to access the DynamoDB table in account number one as well? Well, that is simple. You can just define a different DynamoDB client for account number one. So for example, you can do something like AWS one, DynamoDB client equal to both of three, client DynamoDB and then the region name to 
be whatever region your Dynamo DB is. So in this way, you have two clients that is for account number one specifically, and that one is for account number two specifically. So you can access DynamoDB tables in both accounts at the same time in one Lambda function. And that is it for today's tutorial. If you guys like this video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.